Hello everybody and welcome back to Addicted Fishing. Today is a very wet, cold, miserable winter's day in the Pacific Northwest and we're loading up to go out and film a video. And as I was getting all my gear together, I was thinking to myself, man, I have a lot of stuff. I got bags on boxes, on bags and lures and piles of stuff. And I was wondering, what would happen if I only took one lure to the river? So that is exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna load up the boat, hook it to the truck, and we're gonna take one lure and one lure only to the river and see where it gets us today. So without further ado, let's go do it. So in a perfect world today, we'll catch a winter steelhead. And my fingers are crossed. The first one is always the hardest. And any of you steelhead anglers out there, whether it be for any, any run of steelhead, the first one can be the very hardest to get out of the way. And for me, it always seems to be that first winter steelhead. It's really bittersweet when you finally get them. But then it's almost, it's almost a sad, it's almost a, a double-edged sword because then you're hopelessly addicted for the rest of the season and you, you start putting off all the important things in life. You start chasing reports, you start fishing, every single day because you caught one and I hope today that happens to me so my fingers are crossed I'll take any kind of fish but a winter steelhead would be amazing uh -oh. what the hell was that oh my god oh my god everyone oh my god first cast barely made it even a couple of feet down the river we really don't have a species in mind here today. The goal is and was just to come out and have fun and catch a fish if we could. And it looks like we're off to a good start. So there's a few different species in here. I don't, again, don't really have preference to one. Oh my God, I'm getting bit again. It's happening, it's happening. I'm gonna let him really eat it this time. He's gonna poop it out. He's gonna poop it out for me. What was that? Took my shrimp. Shrimpless in paradise now. So I'm putting a little pieces of, of prawn on here because there are a sea run breed of trout in here as well as steelhead, and both of them really like shrimp. So that was very suspect, everybody. Very, very suspect. What is that? Chompy Wompy to the max. Chompiest Wompiest, man. It's got to be a trout, but for how much I'm letting him eat it, everybody, I would assume it should stay in his mouth. I don't know. He's just stealing all my freaking shrimp like he's on vacation. Oh, there he is. I got him. I got him. I got him. Oh, it's a little fish. They got to eat too, though. They got to eat too. Little, you're not even excited. You don't even like little fish. What a way to start the day, everybody. Heck yeah. Second cast, and we got a trout on the line. Now, one thing we preach a lot at Addicted Fishing, we give a lot of tips and tutorials and stuff out there, but one thing is for sure that we say all the time that a lot of people really don't listen to us about is using shrimp for steelhead and for trout because they absolutely love it. Beautiful little rainbow. Might be a cutthroat. I'm seeing a little bit of red in that jaw there, but a perfect little first fish nonetheless. See you later, little guy. Well, at least we can sleep a little bit better tonight. We got him. Let's get back in there. So the setup I'm using today is just your typical steelhead slide float. I got my Akuma X rod. This is a 9.3. Any rod will work as long as it's a little bit longer for this float fishing. Whether you're on the bank or in the boat like we are right now, this setup works really great. So I have my slide float. I put about four or five big split shots on there. A little bit of a swivel right there, just a barrel swivel to keep that split shot from sliding down. My leader right to an addicted Sink It Series jig. Pink always works good on any river, anywhere. So I'm sticking with it. And of course, a little bit of shrimp on there. So. We're off to a good start. Oh, that's a fish, that's a fish. I don't know what it is, but it's a bigger one. Bigger than the last, bigger than the last, everybody. The old sneaker behind the boat. Woo, that's what I'm talking about. Oh boy, boy, boy just look at that thing go. Woo, we got a jumper, everybody, we got a jumper. Little's excited. It's big enough to get a little excited. What is this thing? Oh my goodness. Oh man, that's a nice fish. That is a nice fish. It might be a little steelhead. It might be a really, really big trout. I don't know yet, but we're about to find out here. 
Either way, I am stoked! Oh man, oh man, he's working. What is this thing? What is this thing? Wow, what a freaking specimen, everybody. Make sure we don't crash here. It looks like a trout to me. Oh my goodness. This just may be one of the most beautiful cutthroat trout I have ever, ever laid hands on. Oh my God, everybody. Oh my goodness. Holy shnikes, everyone. He's in, he's in survival mode. Look at that thing. Holy smokes, everyone. You can see the red, uh, it's not even, it looks like a, oh, it is a cutthroat, it is a cutthroat. I really recommend, it's, it has to be 14 inches and over to keep. But what I recommend to people, just out of the, the theory of conservation, is to not keep these big ones like this. Even though you can, there's a, there's a risk and a reward factor in between keeping big, big trout like this that are native species, even if you can keep them. So let that be said for this episode. Just because you can keep a fish doesn't mean you should. Wow. Look at, one more look at this specimen before we go. Get him off the hook here. Wow, see you later, buddy. Thank you. Addicts, what a fish! High five, and what a start to the day. I was not expecting to see those things, and especially that big. I need more shrimp, let's go. So things were happening faster, but I wanna reiterate on what I was just saying so that you guys all get the point out there. In, in Washington State in particular, you are allowed to keep coastal cutthroat trout. But the thing is, is they, a lot of times in the, the rivers that you'll find them, they are a wild and a native species. So what that means is that those fish come back and forth from the ocean. A lot of times, like that trout right there might not have even been born in this river. It might have come from a different tributary nearby and it's here just to feed on the salmon eggs and, and to survive and, and basically eat the food that they have available for them in the river system. They are very delicious little creatures. But what I will say, again, the legal, the legal size is over 14 inches. But if I'm gonna keep one, I try to keep them right at that 14 inch zone. Because again, you see, just by the characteristics of that fish's face, it's been caught multiple times. That thing has been back and forth and in the river for years. And it's a detriment to the species and to the fishery to try to kill those things because that fish will be caught again. It will come back into the river system and that thing will eventually spawn and create more of those fish to come home. So fish like that, I always like to let go and I like to keep them a little bit smaller. So if we find one within that 14 inch range today, we're gonna keep them and we're gonna eat them. Something was telling me I needed to relocate. So we did just that. We came a little bit further up river for not really any reason, kind of on a hunch. I had a little tickle in my elbow here. Kind of, you kind of see how it's a little, you know, misshapen now because of the tickle. And uh, so we headed up river, found a new spot. Let's see what happens. Oh, he's chasing it, he's chasing it. Oh my God, he's gonna get it. I got it. <laughs> I don't know if we had any cameras going. Oh, he's gone. As fast as he was in our lives, he's gone. First cast into the new spot. I was just trying to get all the GoPros ready. Everything was dead. You guys have to understand sometimes. Now, I don't think we talk about it enough in these videos, how difficult it can be to get them made sometimes, especially in the winter time when we have short days, there's not a lot of fish around. We have, you know, grave conditions with weather and whatever else is, is causing those rivers to go up or down. And it makes it really hard to find a place to go out and film a really fun video for you guys. So I hope you're appreciating this one. It's working out just right. I'm gonna put some more shrimp on, see if we can't catch another fish. Okay, everybody. So we found this glassy little tail out. We're obviously getting some great bobber down. So I said, hey, let's get the drone in the air, see if we can get some epic shots of these bobbers sinking on these fish. So we got a fresh shrimp dinner on my pink jig. We're sticking with it. Let's see if we can make this happen. Okay, Alex, I don't know if you can see this, but it's going down. The bobber's still up, but the situation is going down. We got the drone flying right here. We got the bobber in between. And we're gonna see if we can't make magic happen here. This has been a shot that I've been trying to get for years and we've never really made it happen. So whether it's on a trout, whether it's on a steelhead or a salmon or whatever is swimming in the river or the lake that will make this happen, I'm happy to see it go down. Let's see what happens here. Oh my God, we did it! Oh my God, we didn't do it! We, we didn't do it. He's there, oh, is he there? Is he there? I saw him come back and pick that thing. Oh God, oh God. He really wanted it, there he is. I, oh, he's gone now. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh 
horseshoes. <laughs> little, little, I know that was exciting. That's what we call horseshoes and hand grenades, everybody. Almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, not drone bobber downs. I think I'm shrimpless in paradise. He got lunch. I served him lunch. He didn't even have the, the wherewithal to leave me a tip. Goodness gracious. That was epic. So I want to ask all you addicts out there and drop some comments below on what your favorite kind of shot is on these addictive videos. Is it the, the landscape scenic shots? Is it the bobber downs? Is it the, the bendo shots where we're ripping lips on fish? Or is it stuff like this where we're trying to get drone shots with a bobber and, and stuff like that? It's honestly, it's probably the most fun part. What's stressful of making these videos at times is trying to be dynamic and to get these shots. And with your guys' help, it makes it a little bit easier. If you tell us what kind of shots you like, we'll be trying to get them. So comment below on what your favorite kind of shots in fishing are. What makes you feel like you're actually here and living the moment with us? Back in the danger zone, everyone. Back in the danger zone here. The stars are aligning and the bobber's down and he let it go again. Okay, I'm gonna give him a twiddle. Twiddle, twiddle, and might have stole my lunch again. Stole my lunch money again. I guess we gotta pay our dues. Oh, come back for it. I think one thing that is definitely not a surprise to me, I've seen it happen so many times when fishing with, with shrimp on a jig like this, is how dependent on having some shrimp, there he is, oh he's gone, is how dependent sometimes the bite is on having shrimp on the bot or on the on the actual hook there. It seems like as soon as that, that bait is gone off of the jig that you'll stop getting bites. And even, even so that fish will, those trout are stealing that shrimp off of the, the jig and then completely leaving it and just abandoning that jig for all that it's worth. So really, is it the jig, is it the steak or is it the sizzle? That's what I want to know. We're about to find out. Clock is ticking, everybody. We've got six minutes of battery life on the drone. Let's see if we can make magic happen. I think we can. Come on, Mr. Tommy the Trout. Bat my jig. Right there. All right, everybody. we got to bring her down. The eagle must land. We're throttling out, everybody. We're throttling out. Whew. Live action. Live YouTube action, everybody. Woo. Success. Oh. 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 Oh, 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 pulling on my heartstrings, you are. I think we're shrimpless. I feel like we're shrimpless. Gotta be shrimpless. Gave another free lunch. I don't know. It feels, actually, there's still shrimp. There's still shrimp, everyone. We're going back in. I gotta go a little bit further. There's some uncharted territory over there that I must chart. There we go. There we go, we're really breaking ground here. Yep, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh my God, he wasn't there. What the bajayjays. Oh my goodness. What the heck was that? Oh, that was good. Not the biggest one yet today, but a good one nonetheless. Boy, I love watching a bobber go down. What a cool little trout. Once again, we are on a roll with these cutties today, you guys. I'm glad I picked this one lure for today because I knew I've fished enough in this time of year to know that what lures attract multiple different species. And that bobber and jig can always be a good call for no matter what species that you're fishing for. So far, it's only got trout, but I'll take it. What a beauty. Oh God, oh God, oh God. He's spicy. He's spicy. Woo, 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 straight from the ocean. Holy notes. Oh, he's making a mess. This guy, this guy, this is why we can't have nice things. Bring a broom, because it's a mess, everyone. It's a mess. There he is. Another beautiful little rainbow. 
Wow, I can't tell if that's like a rainbow or a little half pounder steelhead, but nonetheless, it's another fish on the one lure challenge. Let's keep it going. Oh God. Oh goodness. And another, and another on the pinky tip. Oh God, dick. Can't count it everyone, we can't count that one. Take the tally off the board. That one got a free lunch. Free shrimp lunch today for that trout. Woo! He really messed with it for a long time. That can be a really key factor in fishing a bobber and jig is waiting for the bobber to go all the way down. We really, the beauty of fishing a bobber and jig is that fixed hook. That thing is sitting like that the whole time. And those fish, once they actually eat it, are almost guaranteed to get hooked and don't come off very often. And so what I'm saying with that is a lot of times when you do get a bobber down like that, it's not necessarily imperative to be super quick on the hook set. Let that thing go down, make sure that fish has it, and let him fully bite down on that jig before you set the hook. And then once you do, odds are he really won't be coming off that often. That one, I got a little too excited. Oh my God, he's there again though. Oh my God, I just gave another free lunch. Oh geez, oh geez, oh boy, oh geez. All right, we got their number now. We found them, everyone. Oh, free lunch again. Just gave it away. What a successful day it has been. And I must say, I'm so glad that this paid off doing the one lure challenge. I wanna see some comments below from you guys on the lures you wanna see us use next. I think throughout the winter, I'm gonna give it a couple different tries on a lot of our addicted products, but if you have any other ones out there you wanna see us use, drop those comments below. We'll be sure to try to get a challenge video out. Probably my very favorite point of the day today. One, was that it was a success. Two, that beautiful big trout that we caught. And three, the interactions with some of the people that we had on the river throughout the day. We pulled up to one of our last holes of the day and a gentleman yelled across the river to me that we changed their lives. And then as soon as we pulled up to the boat ramp, another guy here pumping his fist and cheering. And I must say, and especially in spirit of the holiday season, I wanna thank all you addicts out there so much for the amazing community that we've created. You guys have changed our lives just as much as if we have had the chance to change yours. And I wanna say thank you so much for that opportunity. If you guys wanna see more fun challenge videos just like you saw today, be sure to go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on. Please give this video a thumbs up so we can beat that algorithm. And drop a comment below and you can be the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching guys. You stay fishy, we'll see you out there.